CataractCoach.com. Ruptured posterior capsule. Can we still implant a toric trifocal IOL? This is not going to be an easy case. Let's go through the routine part of the surgery, and we'll speed up the video so we can get through it all. It looks pretty routine. Making the phaco incision here on the steep axis. Of course, the black ink marks show us the cardinal meridians. Normal capsular axis, zonular support looks pretty good. A little hydro dissection being performed. Again, all pretty routine. Let's watch carefully to figure out where we get the capsule break. And when that section comes, we'll slow it down. So there's the chop, two halves, further sub-chopping. That looks all pretty smooth. No issues here. Rotating the second half around, aspirating that with FACO power being applied. Pretty clean. Let's do the cortex removal. So as we do the cortex removal, it looks pretty smooth. And we get out that epinuclear shell, most of the cortex. Now let's slow things down here a little bit. So cleaning up the cortex, and then we're going to clean off that posterior capsule. Now remember, the posterior capsule is just four microns. So try clean off that little bit of a debris, and right there we just made a hole in the capsule. Now let's watch that again. Let's slow things down. We're going to show you this again in slow motion, but there's that hole we made in the posterior capsule. And now we're going to put in some uh, dispersive viscoelastic here, keeping the foot pedal on position one, very important. Don't let the eye collapse. So there's no vitreous prolapse at this point, and we need to keep it that way. So there we go. Now it's been stabilized. Let's watch in slow motion. Again, just cleaning up the posterior capsule. We just so happened to find a weak spot in the capsule where that suction was enough to open the posterior capsule. So this is the balance. You know, you're cleaning off the posterior capsule. You got to be careful. In some cases, even if you do nothing wrong, you're still going to get a weakness and you can still get a break. So we filled up the eye with our viscoelastic. And now let's see where's that break and can we turn that into a capsulotomy or capsulorexis, a posterior capsulorexis, because that'll have no weak edges. So we're going to try now with the eye full of viscoelastic, try to get the edge of this with our capsulorexis forceps, and can we create a small round opening from it? We don't want that irregular edge. And this can, is a good technique, but it can't always be done. So we're trying our best here. And if we're able to, it's great. But in this case, really couldn't convert it to a posterior capsular axis. That's ideal because it won't spread apart. So there's our hole still. It's, again, it's a small hole. And it's not in the center. And let's go ahead and put our lens in. So this lens is a trifocal toric lens. And the difficulty, of course, is having to manipulate that toric lens. So I'm making another paracentesis incision here. And always feel free to make another one if you need to. And the reason is so we can access that little last bit of subincisional cortex that remains. So we don't want to leave that in the eye either. So a little aspiration, just manually using a 3cc syringe with a 27-gauge blunt cannula. So now we've removed that. Now there's absolutely no cortex left. Add a little more viscoelastic. Make sure that the eye is going to stay inflated. Now we'll load up the lens. I'll do that at high speed here for you. And it's again a trifocal toric single piece acrylic lens. We'll put it in the capsule bag. We'll slow things down here a little bit. And now we'll get it into the exact position that we want. So we're going to rotate it here, get it into the appropriate position, and look what happened. The poster capsule opening ended up becoming larger. Now there's still plenty of support. So that open zone is there centrally. And now we're just confirming the orientation of the lens. So we'll pre-hydrate and seal the incision, even though there's still viscoelastic in the eye, because we don't want the AC to collapse. So hydrating that incision now. There's still viscoelastic in the eye. We're going to remove it. But this is a smart move so that we don't ever have collapse of the anterior chamber. If you let the AC collapse, you'll get vitreous prolapse. This eye has, yes, an, a small opening in the poster capsule, but all of the vitreous is in place. The anterohyaloid face is intact. What do we do differently on this viscoelastic removal? Slow it down. We drop the flow rate to about half normal, so 30 cc's a minute max, and we 
slow down the infusion even, the infusion pressure. So now we have the lens where we want it. We did not go behind the lens to remove any viscoelastic. And notice how we did not let the AC collapse. Now I'm just sweeping around the angle of the eye to make sure we remove any little bits of viscoelastic from the AC. And then we can hydrate and seal that paracentesis. Notice how even when we took the, the IA probe out of the eye, we did not let the AC collapse. That's so important. And so the lens is in good position. I'm happy to tell you that the patient did beautifully and had no issues at all, achieved excellent visual outcome, a planar refractive result as well. Hey, check out cataractcoach.com, our free teaching website. You'll learn so much. We've got great videos, a free daily email, and you can even submit your video. Give it five minutes a day, and I bet you you'll become a much better surgeon.